Все идет. Hi, you're watching a replay of um, a live stream, and today we are talking about three common misconceptions that a lot of importers and exporters do, and that could ruin your business. My name is Max, and sitting next to me is Alex. Hello. And we are from a company called Easy Freight. Our combined experience is just about 25 years. So the first mistake that you are probably making is you purchase your goods based on SIF terms, meaning cost insurance freight. And that means that you rely on your supplier, who is most of the time based overseas, uh, to arrange the insurance. That means that you have no idea who is the insurance company, where they're based, what are the conditions that will um, cover your goods, and you pretty much lose all control if something unfortunate happens to your goods. I'm just gonna check with Alex, is our live stream yeah, working on. properly? Can you please sh share it um, with the group? So we're just gonna share it um, with Boris our Boris. importers group and on our personal pages as well. Does it say how many? So we've got one viewer. That's probably me. <laughs> Have you shared with on your personal profile as well? Okay. So the second and uh, another reason why you um, want to be careful with SIF shipments, meaning that you rely on your supply to arrange the insurance, is that you want to understand what you insured for. Um, it, it the same principle applies when you have your vehicle insurance, car insurance, or any other kind of insurance. And especially if you think about it, when you import something valuable, it doesn't matter whether it's $5,000, $10,000 or $50,000, you want to understand what are you covered for so you have a peace of mind. So next time, if I were you, um, I always recommend importers to talk to a local freight forwarder who can explain you the process about the insurance, or you can speak to any insurance broker who has the qualifications and uh, they will certainly guide you. Um, so just to clarify, this is this all information is of general advice and uh, you have to talk to an experienced professional who will understand your personal situation and explain all different options. Alex, can you see, do we have any viewers here? Yeah would be good to for you to just to click on the like button so we can understand whether can you hear us at all maybe say hi say your name and in the meantime I'll continue with the second mistake that most importers and exporters make so another misconception about the cargo insurance is that a lot of people think that, well, if I'm using a company, whether it's a freight forwarder or you book directly with the shipping line, that they will certainly have their own insurance and they will cover my container or one pallet. And that's not the case. Maybe they do have insurance. In many cases, they do have insurance, but they have limited liability. And the reason for this is that New Zealand market or any other similar markets are very small for them. And there was an international agreement done to make sure that all companies are covered and they will not go bankrupt. For example, if one of their vessels uh, will be damaged and 
um, there will be a big loss of a lot of containers. So they make sure that they have a limit. And the limit is for sea freight is up to $500 US dollars. It's a rough figure per package. So whether you've got one pallet or if you've specified on the bill of lading, for example, you've got 10 crates. So this is your limit. Same applies for air freight. They have a limit to make sure they can continue their business if their plane goes down in unfortunate situations. And the air freight limit is roughly 20 US dollars per package. Do you want to type something in the comments so people don't forget? I did, yes. That's so good. Did. And the third misconception is called general average. Meaning, if you do not have cargo insurance and there is a big loss, for example, to half of the, of the, of the ship and 50% of the containers have to be thrown overboard to salvage the, the remaining cargo, all importers and shippers have to share the costs for the exercise to save um, the stuff, the vessel and other goods. And this is called general average, meaning even if your goods have survived and they were not damaged, you still have to pay and you have to share millions of dollars in costs and if you would have an insurance, in many cases you would be covered. So, so far we've gone through three common misconceptions. The first one is that you rely on your supplier to arrange the insurance overseas, meaning you have no idea what the insurance is, if there is any insurance at all, and what's the claim process. The second mistake is that you think that your shipping line has an insurance and that's not the case even they well they do but they're not gonna cover you hundred percent if you've got a very expensive cargo the third least last but not least is that you still gonna be liable if something happens to the vessel or to the big portion of the goods so it's important for you to have a liability protection and by the way feel free to ask any questions if you have about the insurance about freight forwarding customs clearance is there anyone uh, asking no, there's questions? No questions so far um, just probably remind uh, our viewers about Rina uh, disaster yeah it's a good example of what you were saying Correct, so Alex was um, talking about um, a relatively recent unfortunate disaster uh, with a vessel called Rina uh, near Tauranga. It doesn't happen too often, but a lot of um, businesses uh, were suffered because they had to share the cost to salvage the vessel uh, to recover some of the goods and you can actually um, Google it's uh, called Rina disaster. Yeah, so that's a perfect example where you um, should have some kind of insurance, whether it's apply specific to your shipment to your one container, or maybe you can have an insurance that um, covers the whole year if you've got multiple containers coming in. Um, and by all means, feel free to ask any other questions, whether now or you can email us or phone us later and uh, we'll be happy to talk to you anytime. Right, I'm posting our contact details. Good. All right. Uh, ben, do you want to cancel the streaming? Thank you very much and uh, talk to you again probably next week. See you. See ya.